right, in this video, this is T's Workbook Hints video number 12, and this is going to be a distance rate time word problem. This is actually number 27 from the Math Practice Test 1 in the version 2.0 of my T's Math Workbook. Now, number 27, it says, if it takes McKenzie three hours to travel 180 miles, how much faster is Jack's average speed than McKenzie's? if he can drive the same distance in two hours and 15 minutes. Now a formula that you do not want to forget is the formula rate times the time is equal to the distance. And you oftentimes will see it written like this, RT equals D, rate times time equals distance. Now what do we know about McKenzie? McKenzie, it took her three hours to travel 180 miles. So we know McKenzie's time, T, that's going to be 3, and we also know the distance that she travels is 180 miles. So what we can do here is we can plug in the 3 for T and the 180 for D. This will allow us to solve for her rate or her speed, and this is an average speed. So we have R times 3, again that's R times T, and this is equal to her distance of 180 miles. Now a common way you can write this out too is to write 3R is equal to 180. That's the exact same thing. R times 3, 3R, exact same thing. And to get R by itself, we divide by 3. Therefore, we have a rate for McKenzie or her speed is going to be 60 miles per hour. 60 MPH. Now you probably knew that without me even going through this formula, but I wanted to remind you that rate times time equals distance. And if you know any two of these values, you can always solve for the third value. And if we think about it, if McKenzie was driving 60 miles per hour for three hours, well, 60 times three, rate times time does give you 180 miles. Now on to Jack. What do we know about Jack? Jack travels the same distance in 2 hours and 15 minutes. And our goal is to figure out how much faster is Jack's average speed. Well, we know McKenzie went 60 miles an hour on average. Let's figure out how fast Jack was going. Now, something you want to be careful with here is this part. 2 hours and 15 minutes. It is not 2.15 hours. That is not correct, and I see a lot of people do that. 2 hours and 15 minutes is actually 2 and 15 sixtieths of an hour. Why do I say 15 sixtieths? Well, 15 minutes out of 60 minutes. There are 60 minutes in one whole hour. So if you were to grab a calculator or if you just wanted to convert this to a decimal, we would have 2.25. It turns out 15 minutes is 0.25 of an hour. Or you could think about it as being 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. Maybe you've heard somebody say quarter after. And when they say quarter after, that means it's 15 minutes after the beginning of an hour. You ever heard that before? If somebody said, hey, it's quarter after four, that really means 4.15. But anyway, do not do 2.15 for two hours and 15 minutes. Two hours and 15 minutes, 15 sixtieths of an hour, we have 2.25 hours. Now let's go back to our formula, rate times time equals distance. We're trying to find Jack's rate, and we're going to multiply this by the time that he travels, which is 2.25 hours, and this is going to be equal to Jack's distance. And you may say, well, what is Jack's distance? He's going the same distance, so we're still going to use the 180. And again, you can write this as 2.25 R, this is equal to 180, and now we need to divide both sides by 2.25 to solve for Jack's rate. And if you take 180 divided by 2.25, you will actually get Jack's rate or speed of 80 miles per hour. Now be careful, we still have not answered the correct question yet. The question says, how much faster is Jack's average speed than McKenzie's? Well, Jack was averaging 80 miles per hour. McKenzie was averaging 60 miles per hour. The difference between these two, which is going to be 20 miles per hour, that answers the question. Because again, it does say, how much faster is Jack's average speed? 
You want to find a difference there. So therefore, our final answer to number 27 on the math practice test one in the T's Math Workbook 2.0 is 20 miles per hour. And there you have it, a distance rate time word problem. You definitely want to remember that rate times time gives you distance and you can solve many other types of distance rate time word problems like that. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.